Here goes nothing on the menu today. <laughs> this is cracking me up. This is just torture. Welcome. No, you didn't wake up on the wrong side of bed. I'm just doing the show from here today. Oh, hello, Chip Dippers. Welcome to Retro Recipes. Now, you might remember several recipes ago, I introduced you to the Double Joy. This was my invention contraption for controlling two computers, one, two, with the same joystick, one. And the idea of that was to just have a little fun seeing if there was such a thing as the perfect ported game with some conversion capers. Well, I think it's high time that we actually did that. So I've set up some computers here and we're gonna be doing some Atari 400 versus Commodore 64 versus Atari VCS versus Commodore VIC-20 to see if there is such a thing as the perfect port. I don't mean the drink. So let's get stoned instead with asteroids. Get it, stoned. Uh, this is the Atari version, uh, both published by Atari for the VCS and the Atari 400. And I suspect they're actually based on the same code, kind of like Pitfall was for both those consoles as well. And look at that, we've got asteroids running on both machines. Now I can see that the Atari 400 is going a little slower, which is weird. But anyway, let's pick up our joystick and see what happens. I can immediately see, as you can, that they are not in sync. <laughs> uh, but I do maintain that this is a really challenging game of its own, controlling both ships with one joystick. Um, but sadly, not the perfect ported game. Yeah, the 400 starts further to the left for starters. Let's see how far I can get. Hopeless. Just got to keep shifting your eyes from one screen to the next. Game over on the 400. Game over on the VCS. Well, that was a <laughs> interesting uh, experiment. I scored 1180 on the VCS, 610 on the 400. But this is not the perfect ported game. Well, maybe we'll have more luck with Pitfall. Uh, this is in honor of the recent video we did about Pitfall 2 and that special hidden Easter egg. We won't find that Easter egg in here, but we might find the perfect port. Let's try it out. Load it up off the SD card here. All right, there we go, looking good. It's interesting just looking at these side by side, even without trying to play them. You can see the C64 has some enhanced detail in the trees. And that was done because obviously the C64 has more memory. The VCS, I think the Pitfall ROM is eight kilobytes, whereas the Commodore 64 had 64, funnily enough. So the coder who did the conversion was able to fit more stuff in and doesn't it look nice? But let's see if it plays nice. <laughs> oh, I love this concept so much. That is a first, we are, I was able to jump the hole. Ah. <laughs> At least uh, going in, I was able to jump the hole. That is promising though, isn't it? Now, I'm, now of course I've ruined it by getting excited and I'm out of sync. Hmm. <laughs> I blew it, I blew it. Okay, let me reset. They are both ready to go. Let's see if I can get over the log on both machines simultaneously. Eee. Oh. oh, that was close. That was close. Now, we've luckily got a wall there, which we can use to kind of reset our position. That is really interesting. So the guy that uh, created this conversion on the C64, he has got the measurements perfect Pretty much. I mean, look at that. So I'm against the wall. 
and then I'm pretty much on the ladder on both. So I should be able to just run up the ladder here. <laughs> it's a bit of a mind uh, melt because I have to look at the logs on both and try and also time the rope on both. Can I step out of the screen and see if the rope resets? Well, it was Tarzan on one, but not on the other. How do I get off the rope? <laughs> oh boy. The logs are kind of in sync, aren't they? Look at that. That's don't think there's going to be a way to get these to jump in sync because uh, the rope is just swinging in a different pace on both machines but that is that's surprisingly fun uh it's one it's like one of those games that drives you crazy and keeps you addicted at the same time i don't think we can say that pitfall is the perfect ported game but it is really well done And of course, the thing that's making all this possible, as I showed you earlier, is the Double Joy. And that was a sponsored project by our friends at PCBWay. If you want great quality PCBs that can let you invent fun projects like this, I truly recommend them. Because as we all know, PCB stands for Ported Carts Bad, doesn't it? So next up, how about Conky Doctor, Donkey Kong? Uh, this is, of course, by Nintendo. I didn't Nintendo offend you. <laughs> It's not about your Nintention. <laughs> and published on the Atari VCS. And the C64 version was published by Ocean Software, but still copyright in Nintendo. So there's a fair chance that these may be the perfect ports. Let's try it out. Now the VCS version, of course, loads straight to the platforms because it has a lot less memory. Okay. Ah, well, we have a little intro here on the C64. Okay, <laughs> look at that. Oh, that ladder is off. Ah. And I'm dead already. So this, that intro is going to be a problem. And there's extra features on the Commodore. We've got those fire buckets. Of course, now I'm in the wrong place again. Ah. <laughs> challenging again. Very challenging. Dead. So actually the C64 version is more difficult, isn't it? Here we go. obstacles on the C64. Oh boy, this is frustrating. <laughs> I'm losing the will to live, or at least play. I think we have to resign ourselves to yet again saying that Donkey Kong is not the perfect port. So I found that a bit challenging, but maybe Lady Fractic will have a bit more success. So let's try her with Conky Dog, Donkey Kong. Hello and welcome to the Lady Fractic portion of today's episode. I am Lady Fractic and I will be playing Donkey Kong. Now I haven't actually played this specific one before, but it does remind me of the level in Super Smash Brothers that I hate. So let's go. Uh-oh, one gets there sooner than the other. And... Okay. I don't know how to play this game. Okay, there we go. Nope. If I didn't have ADD, I've got it now. 
because as we all know, ADD stands for... Attention Donkey Kong Deficit. This is just torture. There we go. Wow, come on. Oh, oh God. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, okay, I got... Sacrifice one for the other, that's how... Sorry for putting you through that, babe. So is our relationship better or worse now? It's fine. I, I'd love to try a different game another time. Okay, well, it's not working out very well so far, but I mustn't get defensive. Instead, I must play Defender. You can see what I did there. Let's pop this in. I've got the C64 cartridge loaded up as well. See what happens. Similar kind of screens. Okay. Well, we're doing something, but very different games. They've got different landscapes, different enemies. I mean, I'm able to play a decent game on both. I mean, I've got to admit, I'm having fun. <laughs> uh. It also takes longer to get the ship to the top of the screen on the VCS, so... Nowhere near as accurate a conversion as uh, Pitfall was. Well, Defender is not the perfect ported game either. So let's try two different systems, mix things up a little bit. I actually spoke to the 9-bit guy to see if he had any recommendations. And he wanted to see if some VIC-20 games that he grew up playing were actually perfect ports to their C64 counterparts or vice versa. Now, I do have a real VIC-20 here. This was a very kind donation recently. However, the games that I want to try uh, are on CRT files, cartridge files, and I can't load those in with my SD to IEC device, and I don't have the real cartridges. So we're going to use the fantastic DC64 by Retro Games Limited, and we're going to be running that in VIC-20 mode. And we're going to be starting with Omega Race, and it says press F1 for joystick. I've never played this game before. I think my joystick needs to be in the other port. Yeah, there we go. Let's see if I can... <laughs> what chaos! Uh, okay. Let's try and get into the corner. Alright, now a kind of reset. I mean, the graphics resolution is, is pretty similar on them both. But... <laughs> the controls are not. Um, the VIC-21 is much more... Uh, has a much higher propensity to go into a never-ending spiral, a faster spiral. <laughs> this, unfortunately, there's no way I'm going to be able to synchronize these two. Fun game, though. I'm, I'm surprised I've never played this. Let's at least try the VIC-20 to destroy everything. Right. Game over on both. <laughs> Utter chaos. Okay, well, from Omega Race, let's try Rat Race. This is Radar Rat Race, to be precise. Uh, push F1 to start. <laughs> I 
This is the stuff of nightmares, guys. <laughs> Why is that so funny? Okay, so don't touch the mouse with the other mouse. Okay, a little better. Why is this so funny? Okay. I feel like the mazes are different a little bit and the mice are chasing me at different paces. There's some cheese. At least I guess. This is cracking me up. Cheese is in slightly different places as well, which is never good. Cheese? Uh. Bye. <laughs> I'm just going to kill myself. Uh, I feel like uh, if the CIA, not the CIA chips in the Commodore, but if the CIA or the FBI wanted to torture you, they could actually play both those songs just like that for about an hour. Uh, and I would give them any information they wanted. <sighs> that was fun, <laughs> but not a perfect port. All right, let's give the Vic 20 one more chance, this time with Choplifter by Tom Grinder. Griner, sorry something else. Uh, let's try it out. Very fancy graphics on the VIC-20 there. First chopper. Did you have a chopper when you were a kid? I had a Grifter XL by Rally. Whoa, okay. Not bad. So I've got a tank on the C64, but not on the Vic. Ah, different kind of thing here on the Vic. Okay, there's the little guys. I'm gonna rescue the ones on the C64. Is that how it works? No, I just died. Pick those guys up on the Vic. Come on, guy. And you. Oh, got a tank. Destroy that on the C64. I mean, I kind of am playing both games differently but simultaneously. Pick up this guy on the Vic. <laughs> Get destroyed on the C64. The Vic 20 is definitely an easier game. And I'm at the end of the screen on the C64 there. Whereas the VIC-20 just keeps going. <laughs> and I'm dead on the C64. So, yeah. <laughs> Again, sadly not a perfect port. All right, we'll, we'll land our helicopter and save some fuel. Great. Oh, by the way, I should point out, uh, in case you're wondering, where I got this rather spiffy, snazzy t-shirt. This came from Into the AM, where they outfit your passion. And they did offer me some t-shirts, and I said, I can't guarantee I'm going to wear them. You know, maybe Puppy Fractic will just have it as a nice winter coat for her walkies. But, no, yes, I said walkies. Uh, lay down. Uh, but when I received this, the fabric is so nice and soft and stretchy. It's kind of almost like Under Armour that I couldn't help but promote it on the channel. So go to the special link just there and you'll get 10% off your t-shirt. Because as we all know, AM stands for amazing material. And last but by no means least, let's try a couple of Star Wars games for the Atari 400 and the Commodore 64. And gosh, even looking at this now, and the angles of it through the camera, I kind of fall in love with it all over again. It's like a big space invader coming to get you. 
But sadly, and rather ironically for a game all about the exhaust port, the Force was far from with us, and the perfect port. But maybe the Force will return with Return of the Jedi. Okay, we are actually playing two very different games here. I don't even know which screen to look at. Ah, bloody Ewoks. I think that's enough uh, riding vacuum cleaners and controlling two different Millennium Falcons. These are obviously two very different games. Well, we are not having much luck here, are we? Uh, I was really impressed with Pitfall, but as for other VCS carts, would you believe that not one of these was ported to the Commodore 64? I think basically they were all Atari exclusives. If you look at the... If you look at the top of some cartridges when you next are holding some, you'll see that they all just say Atari on them. Uh, and several of them never made their way to the Commodore and other systems. They'd probably never make their way onto my VCS now. But anyway, that does pose the problem of how are we going to compare more games? Now there are some other computers that we could try. Uh, one that I really wanted to do, and I mentioned in the first and second Double Joy design video, was the Commodore Amiga. But I since came across a problem with that. Of course I'd forgotten most of the Amiga games were actually designed to use the mouse. And the Double Joy works of course with a joystick. Um, so games I really wanted to test and compare, for example Lemmings on the C64 and the Amiga, it's not going to work because you have to move the cursor to select your lemmings. Uh, I did try for quite a while and unfortunately several hundred lemmings died in the process. So I've abandoned that idea. Uh, so let me know if you can think of any other systems that I may try if I do come back to this Double Joy video project. But other than that, I think it's just time to wrap this up and say as always, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe and support below, maybe with new cartridges and cheerio.